All right. So, Hello. Uh, and Leslie, if you can give me the screen share, I have the PowerPoint. Thank you. Hello, everyone, and thank you for attending. Sorry for the bit of a delay. Today we have a really wonderful speaker, Jan Sugar of Sugar Inc. And she's gonna be talking to us about how stories connect and how we can connect through stories. Uh, this is a really exciting presentation because Jan is actually the leading expert in communication through story. And um, she also happens to be a friend. So I'm really excited about being able to interview a, a good friend about what she does and hopefully can help us really figure out how we can connect through stories. So Jan, um, I'm really interested in understanding how, how we connect through stories. Why, why are we so attracted to story? There's so many answers. How long do we have? 30 minutes and less yeah, than. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll tell you a couple of reasons. It's not an accident that we start hearing stories as soon as, before we talk. Uh, we're being read stories and we, we hear stories. We connect with stories. So if you think of Aristotle 2000 years ago in history, elements of influence, ethos, logos, pathos, ethos, credibility, Logos, the facts, pathos is what's usually missing because we relate to people, to, to emotion. And stories have emotion and stories have relatability. And stories even, like I don't like baseball, but I watched the Lou Gehrig story and it was about him getting sick and everything like that. I loved that movie, not because I love baseball, but because I could relate to the feelings of loss. And so that's what stories do. They bring us together and we are unique. Of course, we're special snowflakes. We're all unique, but we're so much alike too. And stories draw us together. That's so One cool. Answer. That's answer. so cool. I love that. Um, so how can stories really, I guess what I'm trying to say here, the question I have is how do stories really help us see the world and can also save us in the world? So, Anybody who is on LinkedIn, I see Peter Gordon's here, and I know he was on because I, I got a comment from him. Uh, when I was 21, um, I was in grave danger in another country for the first time, and, I, and it involved guns and things like that. And um, I told a story, and the people who were going to harm me let me go. And it was incontrovertible at the time that stories were powerful because story that day story did one of two things it either saved my life or it saved me from great harm i don't know if i was going to be murdered but maybe so that's pretty powerful so if it can do that what else can it do did i answer your question yeah it, it you did and so stories really kind of help us create and see the world it sounds like you're saying it also helps us uh connect to each other so that we are more humanized it sounds like as well exactly i was going to use that word and you just stole it from me but but that day i believe i was humanized and therefore i was spared um if if i was just seen as an object and not a person with any kind of story um not connected to anyone, I, I, I was going to be harmed. So, I mean, stories, it's just the most amazing technology. So station break here. Stories educate us, stories illuminate, stories connect, stories give us hope. Um, do you know, Neil, do you know the author Neil Gaiman? Um, who wrote Coraline, children's author? Oh, there it is. There it is, your uh, quote. <laughs> so he says fairy tales, but I think of this as about story. Fairy tales are more than true, not because they tell us the dragons exist, but because they tell us the dragons can be beaten. And that's what we all need to know. And I, it's particularly, it's critical right now with what's happening in the world 
because we want to know that a George Floyd won't be murdered again. We want to know that COVID can be over. We want to know these dragons can be beaten. And so I love Neil Gaiman and th that, he, that he said this and, uh, and I, I subscribe. So I've got two comments in the, in the, uh, in the chat. One um, is from Jen who says, I believe stories link us through our experiences and our interest. And I think that's really what you're saying is that stories, the reason why we connect is because we see a bit of ourselves or we see what we could become in story. Is that correct? We, we absolutely do. So there's a, a sort of high profile story. This is, again, is about the power. So I'm just, I'm, I'm telling the most dramatic stuff. So we can do smaller things. I'm telling the dramatic things so that we can think about the smaller things that it can do as well. Like perhaps it can make a team get along better in the workplace if it can possibly save your life than making a team get to better. So here's sort of a story about a team. Um, there was a young man in Florida at New College named Matthew Stevenson, and he was one of the only um, Jewish people on campus. He was an Orthodox Jew. And it, it, it happened that it was discovered that Derek Black, who was to inherit a whole white nationalist um, regime, was also on campus. And people started outing Derek Black People heard that he was on campus, and I think he even had a class with Matthew Stevenson. So kind of strange bedfellows, white nationalist and an Orthodox Jew. <laughs> and so when Matthew Stevenson found out that Derek Black was on campus, he did the totally counterintuitive thing. He said, what are you doing for dinner on Friday night? Because every Friday night, he hosted Shabbat dinners and had the Jewish kids on campus. So here he invites a, a white nationalist to dinner. Some of the people who came on a regular basis weren't happy and they left. Over the course of time, Derek came back every Friday night and over the course of time, what he had learned from his family and what he was inheriting and what he had never questioned didn't make any sense anymore. It made no sense whatsoever. And he's not that anymore. He can't, he left the fold, he wrote a book and he's doing totally different things in the world. So stories do, can change us, that story and conversation, but they're all related. I love that. I love that. Just the idea of sharing uh, an experience with someone, you know, going back to Jen's point, that shared experience, that being able to see someone through the conversations and the stories that they tell over dinner, you know, going back to that humanizing someone can really just change a life. It changes how you view and you see people. If we can sit down and exchange stories and learn about each other, we really can see the similarities as well as the differences in our lives. I, I love that. <laughs> and, it, and it's, and it's a, a, a little PS to this is that it's not necessarily, and usually not at all because you frontally like, oh, well, bring it on Derek. Why do you have these views? That wasn't going on. They were talking about their classes. They were talking about, you know, what they were having for dinner the next day. They were talking about, they decided to sort of objectively talk about religion, uh, not their own religions, but religious studies. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what they were talking about. Little by little, they got to know each other, not because they were attacking it this directly, but because they were attacking it through conversation and story. They weren't even attacking it. That's the wrong word. So it's a really interesting. It's another thing that story does is it kind of takes it out of, even though it's uber personal, it takes it out of the personal in some ways. So you're not fighting about it. Yeah. So you've got a couple of comments. One, um, Peter would love, he's dying to hear the rest of your, your life-saving story, which we'll save a little bit to the end, Peter. We're gonna kind of use that as a little teaser because I know the story and it is a really amazing story. Um, and then Tom says, you know, extending a story from my story to your story, it becomes our story and it bonds and unifies uh, cultures. And, and I really, I love that point because I think that it really does. 
because, the, and, and Tom knows a lot about, and Tom's a friend of mine, thanks for being here, Tom. <laughs> um, and he knows lots about philosophy and religion. And there's an, there's an I and a you and a we, and the we is a third entity. And so I think that's partly what Tom's talking about. We can't forget that there's a we, and we create we with stories, and we create we with conversation. So I love that, and that leads us to how do we do this? So do you have a framework or a way that we can, we can learn how to tell stories that are impactful? So some people think that story, oh, what do you know? Um, some people think that stories, storytelling is inborn, and certainly there are people who have a feel for how to tell a story. So what I always think when I think about stories is stories are not the same as something that happened. A something that happened, and I went to the store today to buy food is not a story. But you could, there could be a story about going to the store. Because stories, as you can see in front of you magically, stories have certain elements. So in story, I mean, if you think about movies, just think about movies for a second. In a way, most of them have the same story. There's a problem and it's overcome and there's your movie. It could be about baseball, it could be. So what I often think is, you know, a guy in Luke going to find his droid and the droid is lost is a something that happened. Star Wars is a story. And Luke who lost his droid isn't anywhere in this framework at all. But Star Wars had a setting and there was a triggering event, like the droid was lost. Um, there's an obstacle, there's a challenge, there's drama in stories. There's contrast in stories. Everything isn't like this in a story. There's contrast. There's this happened, but if this happened, it could get better. But if that happened, it would get worse. That's not a something that happened. So, so there, it's, it's too long to talk about right now, but stories have elements. And those of us in the story business all dip from the same pot. We all have different versions of, of the elements necessary in stories, but they're all sort of shared. So this is mine. This spells stories and it's got these, I can, I can go through these quickly. Um, it has all these different elements. And if you follow the elements, and I've worked with teams, I was just at a um, team in, uh, I'm not gonna say the state, cause I can't say who it is, but it's a, it's a giant athletic wear company where you know real life sports heroes are part of it. And I was teaching a team how to tell stories and they just started plugging their something that, some things that happened into these elements and they had stories. So you can start creating stories pretty easily, even if you feel like you weren't born with the thing, mm. the story thing. So yeah, there are certain elements. There's always a problem to solve. Yeah, definitely there's always a problem to solve. If you start <laughs> there, you're, you're on the right foot. That's good to know. <laughs> so um, I, we have some time. So I would love for you to tell the, the Mexico story before we go into the tips. Would that be okay? Sure, I'll tell the not longest version of it. Okay. Because I go over your time. And I also want to say before I tell the Mexico story is that the particular outcome that I got wasn't, because there, there's some sensitive material in it and the particular outcome that I got wasn't because I was so great. There's a certain amount of luck and it happened to work and it might not have worked and I might have had a different outcome. And I do wanna say that to anybody who's experienced a similar situation. Um, I was in Acapulco. It was the first time I was out um, of the country with my family and uh, I had made friends at the place we were staying and one of the friends, a young man, asked me if I wanted to take a walk on the beach. And I said, sure, everybody was walking on the beach at night and everybody was hanging out together and I took a walk on the beach and we were confronted by three men in uniform, cops. And he kind of looked like, oh, cops to help us. 
And I kind of thought, uh -uh, this doesn't feel good. Like, are we going to be arrested for trespassing? Are we on somebody else's property? And I got anxious. Well, very soon it was clear that they weren't interested in our trespassing. They were interested in me. And one of them started rubbing my back and grabbed my arm and started pulling me off to the distance. And <laughs> when I have clients that I help as speakers and help them create their stories and their speeches and connect, connecting with audience, I always have them do audience research and find out what their audiences are interested in and what they want to learn and want to hear so that they can write better things. So let me just say, I did my own version of audience research in about 30 seconds because I thought like, will anything move them? Will anything move them? Will anything move them? Because I thought what was gonna happen was, I didn't think I could survive it. So I, um, I, I sort of quickly did some calculations about who I thought they might be like, they're, they, maybe their daughters, maybe they're Catholic because we're in Mexico and they believe in the sacrament. They, maybe they believe in marriage. Maybe they, maybe, maybe they believe that I'm uh, somebody else's property. Maybe, maybe, maybe. And what I did was I quickly took a ring off my right finger, a little opal ring I had, and I put it on my left finger. I did this all without them saying, put my hands down, put this ring on my left finger and turned the opal to the inside of my hand so that only the gold band showed. And I jutted my hand out and pointed, they didn't speak English. And I said, uh, married, honeymoon, honeymoon, husband. This is my husband, husband. And the guy pulling my arm just looked very challenged. And like, now what am I gonna do with her? And he dropped my arm and let me go. And it was a small story, it wasn't true. But the spirit of it was true. I wanted him to know, you know, I was loved, I would be missed. Um, and, and that's the short version of my story. Thank you for sharing that. And um, I know that it, you know, it's a very traumatic story that had a really positive outcome. And really some of the elements that you talk about in that story, because I know you've, you've actually done that story on stages, um, are some of the tips that you want to impart to the audience today, you know, that idea of observing the environment. And can you speak a little bit more to that and why that was important in connecting the story? To these wonderful things that you've cooked up here and are giving me. Thank you for doing this. <laughs> no uh, problem. <laughs> if you think about it, observing your environment, think about comedians. Why do we sit in audiences listening to comedians and laughing our heads off and feeling like they're talking just to us because they know every foible we've ever had? It's because they're fantastic observers. And so um, you've taken listening and observing apart, but listening and observing to how people roll and what people care about and people's foibles and people's successes and, and what they love and what moves them is a huge part of storytelling. So if you're gonna to speak to a group, if anybody here today is gonna to speak to a group, their team, the losses um, in school. I'm sure some people are students today. Um, figure out what the people you're going to speak to or the person you're going to speak to cares about, and you'll do a lot better with your stories. I, I, at this company, whose name I won't tell you, um, the day that I was there, the team was all women. They were either getting married, getting pregnant, or, or just had babies, the whole team. And I decided to, it took, and I was teaching that story structure that you just posted. And I decided in order to teach that structure, I was gonna tell a story about driving in a car with my youngest back to college when she wouldn't get off social media and give me a bottle of water. I just was, it was a hot August day in the Midwest and I needed water and she wouldn't give me this bottle. And so I cooked up a way to kind of trick her into giving it to me. It was the right audience for that. It was a business audience. These were business women. But at the particular times in their life, it, at that particular time in their life, it was a safe story to tell, a pretty safe story to tell. And they keep telling me how much they tell this story because 
they learned something about telling stories from this story. I don't know that I would have done it for um, male executives in their 60s. So that's that. Okay. Know your audience. I think I just hit the first three, Marie. You did. You did. Okay. You really All did. right. We're on to number four. Know the difference between something that happened in the elements of story. I already did that. Okay. We're on, <laughs> we're, on number, we're on number five, make meaning. So if you see the end of the, I have it in front of me, the, the S in stories is about the sea change, the change that happened. Because in movies, people end up changed. In the hero's journey, there's a change. You go back to your community changed. We're always looking for change, to learn something, to be better, or anything else. So you have to find a way um, to make meaning. I mean, you could pair up with a person on your team or an, a classmate or hire a Jan Sugar or whatever to help you learn to make meaning and to practice making meaning out of your story so that my story about my daughter who wouldn't give me any water ended up being a business story for a global team. And, and that's what I mean by that. And I don't know that we have time to give examples, but. So essentially what you're saying is that a good story not only captures the audience and really allows you to, to empathize or be part of it, but it also has, you, you form a meaning, you get something from it. It creates some change within you. And that's what makes the story really worthwhile. Yeah, yes, so exactly, Marie. So, so um, let's go back to, uh, let's go back to Matthew Stevenson and Derek Black because we've already talked about them. Mm -hmm. When I heard that story, what I understood, so I have a value about friendship and it feels important to me. It feels like, yeah, everybody has friends, but it feels like there's some greater value about friendship. And then I heard that story and I started understanding a lot more about what friendship means and what can happen through friendship, what can happen through story, what can happen through getting to know someone, what can happen through conversation, what can happen over a meal. Mm -hmm. And so that there was that additional, it was very interesting that that happened, but it also had a lot of meaning for me and I proceeded into my life differently knowing that could happen. It was confirmation of something for me. And sometimes it's, sometimes it's confirmation because I had some vague ideas about this. Sometimes it's just new information. Like, I didn't know that. Wow, how cool. That's pretty great. Well, let's try to get some questions from the audience because I think people are riveted by your storytelling ability. They're not really asking a lot of questions in chat. <laughs> Do we have questions? Come on. <laughs> Do we have any questions from the, from the audience? Bring a problem. I'll solve a problem with you. <laughs> Bring a problem. Oh, I, I have Present a chat. Should we take Peter's? Present tense or past? I'm not quite sure I understand the, the question. I'm wondering if he means, do you tell a story in present tense or past? Well, let's ask. You yeah, that. yeah, I, that's exactly what I mean. I've, I've heard several people, Jan, say you should always tell a story in the present tense to make people think they're right there with you. And other people tell it in the past tense. And, you know, I'm not the kind of person that always has absolute rules on everything. But I was just curious about your experience that's and great. thoughts on that. It's a great question. And I've heard what you've heard. So... Uh, I, it might be my Myers-Briggs type or something, but I um, sort of buck rules. So I think there are some universal truths and things like that, but about that as a rule, I think often if you do tell a story in the present tense, it can make it very, you know, instead of saying, so in, I'm not even going to tell you the year that I was walking down that beach, but, um, you know, so in 2006, I was walking down, I was walking down a beach in uh, Mexico. It's a different feel than, so I'm walking down the beach with a guy I met at the hotel. It, it just has a different feel. And I think rather than having a rule about it, you should just know about this rule and then decide what serves your story best. Is that a cop-out answer? I, no, really, I, I really do believe that. It's a great what? answer. What serves your story the best? Knowing 
that there are some options. So learning about story, reading about story is um, really important because you know some of the things that you're dealing with or that you may deal with and, and then you can make really informed decisions and make your storytelling better. Well, thank you, Jan. This has been really wonderful. And I, I love that we've been able to sort of share this concept of how stories connect because many of us are in situations where we have to be able to tell our stories in order to connect with the people that we work with and the people that we serve. So this has been really wonderful and I really appreciate you uh, doing this. I think, I think it's really important for all of us. I alluded to this or straight out said it earlier and I will just say it again. I think this is a real time for gathering stories, um, whether you're in school right now or whether you're in, let's say you're in a company, to gather the stories because we'll forget fast when life changes. We'll forget about the stories and, the, and, and, and learning from the stories of this time is really important. Um, companies to look at themselves in terms of all the little stories, I think is really, really important to capture stories right now. So go find your stories. And one more tip is if you are interested in becoming a storyteller or a better storyteller, make yourself a story library. So if it's an Evernote notebook or something like that, find a place, even if you have a second, to say, oh, that funny thing happened at the grocery store, let's just throw it in. You can flesh it out later, but create a story library that you can start using in whatever it is you're doing, your school, your work, or anything else. It works. That's a great tip. I'm actually going to start doing that. <laughs> I'm going to take that tip. I really appreciate that. That's wonderful. So thank you, Jan. And we want to thank everyone who has uh, attended today. And our very last um, Stay Connected in this perspective series will be uh, next Wednesday, the 12th, and it will be how to advance and move your career forward during uh, times of challenge. And I think we, we are all, Jan, you would agree, um, needing of that and needing to be able to uh, work with our career and advance our careers. Uh, and then if you can donate to the COVID emergency fund for our students, we would really love for you to do that. Um, it's none of our speakers have received payment for any of the, the series. And so for us, we just want to provide and serve and help and we really value your time. And we do have one last um, thing in the chat, Jan, everyone's saying thank you and what a great session. Um, jour journaling helps create stories, uh, says Jen. So that's probably the part of that advice that you were giving. Yeah, that's really great. Yeah. So well, thank you everyone for coming today. And that's, that's all we have. <laughs> it's been lovely. Oh, 